Well, this officially puts me at 295 titles released in the year 2022, uh, even though I saw this after the Oscars and it didn't end all my lists, so it has no impact. I don't think it really would have made my list anyway. So uh, this is shocking because it's the best uh, documentary feature contender, and this is my review of All the Beauty and the Bloodshed. Um, this is available on HBO Max, and yes, it has audio description, which I was worried about. It was released originally on VOD, and it did not have audio description because Neon is the distributor here. And luckily, HBO Max, when they decided to acquire it, uh, decided to put audio description on it. I guess it was one of their bigger premieres. They haven't had anything in a while. I don't know what is taking Magic Mike's Last Dance so long to get on the streaming service. Um... It's funny that it feels long. It's just been like two months. But it was supposed to be an HBO Max title. That's why it feels so long. Um, so I watched All the Beauty and the Bloodshed. Which I was actually really interested in seeing. And I don't know what to tell you. To be totally honest. I think some people love this film. And they love this film because it gave them what they wanted out of it. And other people will not like this film because it won't give them what they wanted out of it. Um... I, it's it's a weird balance. It depends on what it is and, and, and what you've been told and what you want um, what you want this film to be. For me, I heard it was about the woman who was trying to get the sacrament name off of all of these museums and art galleries. Uh, the Sackler family was uh, behind Purdue Pharmacy, which is behind the, the Oxy. Watch Dope Sick, okay? Just watch. <laughs> watch. Don't make me explain this. Um, and she's made it uh, sort of her mission to lead her group, uh, which the acronym is PAIN, uh, and they're going around and trying to get the Sacklers' name, you know, get their blood money out of the art world. They shouldn't be able to buy their legacy anymore. They need, we should be able to get rid of their legacy. So they're trying to convince museums and art galleries to remove the Sackler name and sort of that movement. And I guess she was largely responsible for starting the movement. And I, I had a feeling that for sure that this film was going to talk a little bit about Nan, uh, who is the main <sighs> instigator here. She's our, she's the focus of the story. She's the one that's, that's leading the charge. She's a respected artist. And uh, it spends a lot of time with her. Like a lot of time. Uh, normally, I'm not a huge fan of when artists get to tell their own stories because then they get to tell us what they, you know, they get to not say the things that they don't want to say. It's the story that they want to tell. Um, I made an exception for Pamela Love Story because I felt like Pamela deserved an opportunity considering she did not want Pam and Tommy to be made. She needed like a rebuttal. And so that was fine. Like, I understood why that was being made. Here, uh, I'm also going to kind of make an exception because the way that this woman speaks, uh, I don't feel like she wouldn't tell you. I feel like if she took a dump, she's going to be the one who walks out of that bathroom and goes, I took a dump. And it was huge. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel like she's the kind of oversharer. Like, would, who would tell you whatever it is? Because in this documentary... Some of the things that she says, I'm just like, I can't, I, I can't ever see myself admitting some of those things in a documentary. Like, there are things that I've done where, uh, I just don't think I would, <laughs> I don't think if there was ever a documentary about my life that I would go that far. Um, but she just so casually mentions them. She's so proud of, she wears everything like a badge of honor. Uh, she talks about, for example, one time needing to, uh, move this crate it's really important. She's got a heavy crate and it needs to be moved upstairs. And she's got a taxi driver. So she gives him a blowjob so that he'll move the crate for her upstairs. It, it's it's like that. It's like, who admits to that? You know, like, who? 
And she just kind of laughs. She's like, I gave him a blowjob so he can move my crate. I'm like, okay. So that's where we're at. And uh, the film just, she's very counterculture. She's very um, embracing the the time period. This is a girl who loved the 70s, who loved um, being just off the beaten path and 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 just doing whatever um exploring sexualities and uh being open to anything uh no inhibitions and somewhere along the way she did encounter a need for prescription op opioids and she ended up having an addiction problem and ended up having to go to rehab and um, one of the things that struck me probably the most was when she admitted that she was told to start with three pills a day and her addiction got so bad that she was taking 18 a day. And I was like, oh my God. Oh my God. That is a lot of fucking pills in one day. <laughs> that is a dramatic increase in medicine in one day. Um... Like, imagine if that was beers, you know, like put it with anything else and it just automatically feels like a lot. Somebody's like, yeah, I drink three beers a day and now I drink 18. You'd be like, how do you have a liver? I was, I, I didn't understand how she was alive. I just, everything I, that some, some things that she says, I was just like floored. My problem with the film though, is that it spends so much time on her that it becomes a biopic about her and I showed up for the Sackler part which is mentioned and the film does devote time to it it just does not devote the film has a choice it can either be about Nan or it can be about the movement to get the Sackler's name off of the art world I expected them to at least need to establish Nan for the audience who didn't know who she was I expected that we would need that but there's a point at which the establishing goes too far and it feel, feels more like the documentary is about her than it does about the Sackler uh, removals. And I think that this film, for me, crossed that boundary. I learned too much about Nan. I learned uh, a detrimental amount about her. And what I mean by detrimental is that in a film like this, when you have somebody who rises to the challenge, who rises to the cause, frequently those stories, they mean more when it's somebody you didn't see coming, when it's just like some quiet housewife who never left her house, who all of a sudden is like leading this charge. You know, it's not somebody who literally seemed up for anything. The film spends a great deal of time convincing you that Nan was up for anything. Uh, I mean, no inhibitions. She's the kind of person that she, if somebody had just been like, hey, we're rallying, she probably would have just gone. She didn't even need to know what the rally was about. She probably would have just shown up. Um, so I kind of laugh at parts of the film where she's like, I kind of stopped and I thought, you know, how is this going to affect my career? And uh, I did it anyway. I'm like, no, you didn't. Come on now. Like, your whole thing, your whole shtick is is the fact that you dive headfirst into all of this, I mean, this world. Like, any any time the world presents you with an opportunity to do anything, you take it. So, I feel like if you had just been in the room and somebody else was leading it, you would have shown up anyway. You know, the only difference is that, for, that you're presented as being the head of this pain organization. But if somebody else had been the, le the leader of pain and you were just showing up as a member, you still would have gone. And you wouldn't have been like, oh, I don't know how this is going to affect me. No, you would have shown up. Because I think that's the type of person she is. There's never really a moment in the film that makes you think, oh, this is a recluse. This is, this is a person who, who uh, wants to be left alone. This is a, a very quiet, quiet lady uh, who doesn't have very many friends. She's lived a very <laughs> normal, quiet life. Um, yeah, it's, it's very much not that, uh, there are, it's, it's that it's a talking head type movie where we sit down and we interview people while we show 
sort of clips in the background and we cut to whatever the documentarian uh, spent a lot of time with Nan during this period and has obviously a lot of like archival footage. She's appeared in things, which is interesting. Uh, that they, she's like in movies and stuff, so we get uh, random footage from other things that they pull. But uh, to me, I just I spent a lot of time with her and not enough time with the Sackler cause. And by revealing that she's up for anything, I didn't feel so much like that this was a woman who was totally inspired out of the blue to go and make this case. Dan, to me, came across as somebody who, even if she hadn't taken op op opioids and experienced this herself, that she still would have participated. I, I, and I think that's why the film doesn't work for me, is it didn't really, it didn't really show me that this was, that there was this uh, catalytic moment in the film that really just felt like, oh, yep, that's it. That's the moment. We did it. Uh, she changed her life forever. Put her on a new course. And suddenly she's an activist. Suddenly she's doing things she never would have done before. Because before that, she was doing everything anyway. She was... <laughs> there wasn't... You know, the thing, the kind of things she wasn't doing were like sleeping... Uh, <laughs> sitting down to read a nice book at the end of the day, <laughs> watching TV. I feel like her deepest, darkest secret is that she's binge-watched, binge like, all of Friends. Like, that's... She's, like, that type of person, where it feels like her deepest, darkest secret is something very mundane, where it's, like, uh... uh I really like McDonald's, you know? <laughs> Just <laughs> something that's so very average. Because her life is so not average. Her life is so completely bonkers that it is, it's impossible <laughs> for her to have hidden anything from us that is, that would be shocking. To her, I'm sure what she would consider to be shocking is the fact that she likes an egg McMuffin. Like, it's like her favorite food. I feel like that would be, she'd be like, I don't want people to know this because it's so average. It's so basic. She's one of those people if she liked the, the uh, Starbucks pumpkin spice latte, <laughs> she would like, she'd be like living in shame. She'd be like, I can't tell anybody. Nobody should know. <laughs> um, but like, those are the things that, that she lives in shame with. The other stuff that other people normally wouldn't reveal, she has no problem revealing those things, which leads me to believe she would have absolutely no problem showing up to a rally about anything. I feel like I could get this... I feel like I could get her to show up at a rally for anything. Like anything. Pick it. Um, so, I think she just... Yeah. I think she fights for cause. She's very left-leaning. Uh, whether you're trying to remove the sacra name or uh, save the dolphins or... Uh, I don't know. Pick, pick something. Uh, standing up for equality anything I feel like she would she would be at a march for any of those things she'd be at a march tomorrow for uh, progressive causes this is just not something and I that is to me I think it lost a little bit of an impact and then I spent so much time with her and less time with the reason why I showed up the Zackler family removal of their name I felt like I didn't get a whole lot of that. I felt like this film, which runs two hours, by the way, padded itself with the life story of Nan. Like, it, it wanted to serve more as a biography on her than it did necessarily explore the experience of the Sackler family. Um, it's a little bit of how I felt watching Descendant, um, where, uh, you know, I was told sort of by the description of the film that it was going to be about uncovering this like slave ship right and then it kind of becomes about africa town and how uh the film just uh, the, the the terrible things are still happening to that town today it's, not, it's less about the uncovering of the slave ship and more about this black community and um how they're still today suffering 
this feels like that too this feels like we're tra- we're telling you it's about the Sacra family thing but I mean we're going to talk about it but for the most part it's just a biopic about Nan and I didn't want to see a biopic about Nan I wanted to see uh, a war against the Sackler family so I think when people say that they love all the beauty and the bloodshed it very much just depends on what kind of film you came in for. I don't think this is a bad film, but I'm disappointed by it, and therefore it would not have been in my top. I, there were documentaries that didn't disappoint me and gave me exactly what they promised last year. They were set up, and they said, this is what we're going to do, this is what we're going to talk about, and they did, and they talked about it. And this film just pads itself so much that I felt like it just became something completely different. So I'm going to give... Um, I suppose I should say the audio description, by the way, is fine. Uh, it's It has so few talking heads. It's almost, it's like 90% Nan, 10% other people. So it doesn't need to bounce around. And there aren't that many other people who speak throughout the course of this. So he didn't, the, the documentarian, she actually didn't get, um, you know, 50 people thrown into this with all of their different perspectives. Uh, it's it's mostly Nan, because she's so revealing that you didn't really need to interview anybody else. Um, so the audio description uh, just covers the imagery being shown while she's talking, which makes it really good. And it, it does make sure to let you know, you know, that there are some things happening on screen. Um... You know, a little bit of nudity being shown. Stuff like that. Just whatever. Um, it's a pretty simple film. And yes, it does It does talk about the Sacra family. It does talk about how they use pill bottles and how they lay on the floor and they hold up signs. It does talk about the prescription med drop. Um, that kind of stuff. So it does go there. It just doesn't... That's not what this documentary is about. I would argue the documentary is... That's an afterthought. That's just part of her life. Um, so, that's what she's known for now. I'm gonna give All the Beauty and the Bloodshed a B-. Um, yep. So, anyway, thanks for watching, thanks for subscribing. And if you're not a subscriber, please think of subscribing. I have 99 kids to feed, and I can't feed one. Hit me! Um, (laughs) and, uh... (laughs) <laughs> I also have a website at macromovieguy.com you can go to the audio description project adp.acba.org it'll let you know what has audio description and where you can watch it and you can go to the adna.org that's the adna.org it'll let you know who's narrating your favorite films and television series and you can follow me on Instagram or Twitter at macromovieguy that's it for me today I will review something else for you guys and see you on the other side <laughs>